Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. The aim of this video is to get your X-Carve machine working at its best. And so I'm going to go through a few tips now on tuning it up. And then I'm going to give you an idea of how you can do a double check that everything is working as it should. Now, every now and again, you should put your X-Carve uh, through a little mini service. Uh, and I've got a little acronym which will help you. It's BOPS. The B stands for belts. The O stands for origin. The P stands for pulleys. And the S stands for screws. And I'll take you through each one of those now. Now, the B is for belts. And uh, there are four of them to check all together. There's the one each side, which is on the, the, the Y side. There's one across here, which is on the X side. And then there's this one here uh, for the Z. Now, you should check the tension of these. Now, when you first assemble your X carve, you'll find that you'll need to adjust the tension of these fairly regularly. But after it's settled down, after a, a month or so, uh, then you'll find you probably don't need to check it quite so often. And I like to make sure, in particular, that the Y uh, belts are pretty much at the same tension. And so I can do that by listening to the uh, little sound they create uh, and do that for both sides, and then I'm happy. And you should try and judge that the X one is at a similar uh, degree of tension. And uh, the one up here for the Z, this is actually quite tricky to get this right, uh, but it certainly should not be loose because you don't want the Z skipping beats at any stage. And my next one is origin. And in order to uh, get this right, I'm going to issue the homing command uh, in UGCS. The homing command is $H, and that brings... Uh, the whole gantry, the whole assembly to its home position. So it's in the home position and what I want to now do is to check uh, that the Y uh, position is correct for both sides of the Y assembly. And in order to do this, I'm going to measure the gap between this part of the uh, Y assembly and this end here. And I'm going to measure this for mine and I know it should be about 22 and a bit. It's 22 point one millimeters. I'm now going to go to the other side and that is 24.35 so it's out by just over two millimeters and the only way I've found of sorting it out is to come to this end here and give it a little push that way. Now having noticed that uh, my origin uh, was out by a couple of millimeters uh, there are several things to suspect. Uh, one is, is that the uh, tension of the pulleys is wrong. We're about to check that shortly. And the other is uh, the tension of the belts. And I did notice on mine that this belt was a little looser than that one. So I'm in the process of tightening it up. And P is for pulleys. Uh, you need to go around and check them all. There are eight altogether. Uh, and they need to be just nipped up onto the maker slide. They should just be capable of being moved. They shouldn't be too loose or too tight. And remember, you've got two on each side. On the Y side, uh, you've got two on the X side, and you've got two on the Z side. So they're eight all together. So I've got that adjusted nicely. I'll now just go and recheck the origin. And what I'm doing is I'm sending the machine up to the end there. And I'll give it a bit of X over there. And I'm now going to issue the homing command once more. And once that's there, I'll now check uh, these uh, measurements again. That is 22.11. That's now on 22.2. Now there's one other tip uh, you can do when you're satisfied that the home position is absolutely right. Put a mark, top dead center, on each of the Y carriage pulleys. And I'll do the same on the other side. Now because on our, our two Y pulleys uh, the lines are going across that way, I suggest you also put uh, a line at the top here on the Z pulley, and that's also going across that way, which helps. 
and this is in the home position, so this should be always like that. And uh, with the X carriage, there's no pulley that we can get at, but we can see the end of the shaft there. So you can either put it on the top of the shaft, as I'm doing there, but also you could put it down the end to a small extent. So that's given us now some little telltales, which uh, after the machine's been running, we can just take a look at those, send it back to the hard home position uh, and just see whether everything looks the same. So I'm going to do another check. I've sent the machine off to where you see it now and I'm going to issue the homing command and then I'm going to check those little telltales once it's in the home position. Well it's done the Z already and I can see that my uh, Z is lined up nicely across there so I'm pleased with that. Now before I had had some trouble uh, with the Y axis, so it'll be interesting to see if I've got uh, green lines at the top on both pulleys. I've got a green line on this one, I've got a green line on that one on, on there, and uh, you can't see it but at the back here I've got my green line. So all of those functions work perfectly. So I'm now happy uh, with the lining up of my machine. But there's one other check, it's the S, and that stands for screws. Now, I'm going to go around and just make sure that there are no loose screws. Now, you don't need to do this very often, because, strictly speaking, once you've assembled it, it should be good for a very, very long time. But I'm, now and again, just to make sure everything's okay, I'm going to go around and check all the screws uh, which are holding the various bits of maker slide in place, and so on. It'll take me about five minutes. And that's the last of those uh, screws checked, uh, and I'm absolutely uh, perfectly happy with the way that the x carve is set up. Now, you don't need to go through that whole routine very often, but it does depend on the amount that you use the machine. And if ever you're not happy, look at your telltales if you're worried, and then go about your checks if there's any uh, discrepancy with those telltales. Now the test we're going to do is very simple. I've got a piece of 18 millimeter or three quarter inch MDF and that is approximately one foot square. In fact, mine is uh, 294 millimeters square. Now you may be able to see I've drawn uh, a pair of diagonals across uh, this. Uh, I've then uh, gone through the center line here and the center line there using my square and then I've then cut these corners as well. Now I'm going to create four circles, each eight millimeters deep, and they're going to be one in the bottom left-hand corner, one in the top, top left, uh, top right, and then bottom right, uh, and all of these circles will uh, go uh, entirely within the MDF. They're not going to go off to any one side. And I've set different parameters for each of those four circles and I'll put those up on the screen now. And I'm going to perform each of those tool paths now, and I'll be standing by ready to turn the X carve off if I believe it is struggling. Then when we've done that, we're going to examine uh, the work that's been created and see how true it is. Now, when I first set the machine up for this job, uh, I put a little crosshair here uh, where my laser goes, and the machine's now done all four of those cuts, and I've just checked this, it's returned to the same position as far as my eye can judge. So I'm really pleased with that. That's a good indication at this stage. I'm now going to get the machine to, to go to its home position, and we'll just see whether all our little green lines are lined up. Right, the machine's gone into its home position and my green line is lined up here. I can see the one on the 
Y motor over there is in the upright position, this one's in the upright position, and back here where you can't see uh, the uh, X uh, is in the uh, upright position. And I've got the added advantage, uh, I've got my laser, and I can check my home position as well. So all of those things are absolutely spot on, and all we need to do now is to check these circles to see if they're true, and to see if the increased feed rate has made any difference. And this is the result of my test. Uh, my most modest uh, circle was here, the first one, where I had a pass depth of only 1.5 millimetres, feed rate of 10. I then upped it to 2.5 uh, millimetres pass depth and a feed rate this time of 15. And then I came across here, uh, I increased the pass depth to 3.5 but kept the 15 uh, feed rate and then finally uh, I went up to four millimeters uh, of uh, pass depth uh, again keeping the feed rate at uh, 15 uh, millimeters per second. Now the final one was over the the rule that we uh, use which is uh, cut depth should never be more than half the diameter uh, and my cutter was 6.35 millimeters or quarter of an inch and so that's well over. In fact technically this one is just over that as well. I've now measured all the holes in two places, one in the x direction and once in the y direction. I've done that for each of them uh, and I think that would be where we'd see the most uh, significant difference if there was any uh, oval uh, circles being produced. And in the first case it's very modest, uh, the uh, X uh, diagonal is 112.46 uh, and the Y diagonal is 112.85. That's a difference of about uh, 0.4 of a millimetre, uh, which is pretty reasonable, frankly. Uh, the second one, uh, the difference between the two is, is much less. Uh, the difference is uh, 0.1 of a millimetre. So I suspect this is in the realms of either my measurement error uh, or other factors. Uh, the third one, uh, the difference between the two is point, uh, just under 0.3 of a millimetre. But the final one, uh, the difference is very close uh, to 0.5 of a millimetre. So in a sense, it, you might think, well, it's difficult to conclude anything from that. Except I would say that if you want to have confidence in your X-carve, if you did a, a, a test similar to this for yourself, and every now and again, after you've given your x carver service, uh, you repeat a test like this, uh, then that will give you some confidence uh, that uh, what you're doing with your machine is as close or as accurate as you can reasonably expect. And my next video is going to be about uh, writer cutters, which are absolutely ideal for the x carve Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.